There is a link between Neville House, our first VC, and Keith Payne, although they received their awards 69 years apart, and that link is in the nature of their actions. Keith Payne's citation states, Warrant Officer Payne, of his own accord and at great personal risk, moved out of the perimeter into the darkness alone in an attempt to find the wounded. There was soldiers still on the hill. It's my job, I'm the commander, I've got to get them off. So and I thought, well, the best way for me to get, try and get them off is uh, go, go up my own. And we got there before, just on last light. Got them secure on the ground and, uh, and then uh, I, I said to uh, the American lieutenant and a couple of my own blokes, but I said, look, well, I'm going to go back up and see what I can pick up. So uh, I collected about four or five of those little groupies and stuck them all in one position. I said, now, stay here until I come back. All right. uh, and then I started to hear uh, the NVA uh, firing single shots and I knew that they were killing the wounded on the hill. So I went in that direction and went up the other side. I found uh, a two or three blokes there, all right. so I brought them back lock them down there and I said now I'll, I'll try and go up it again. So I went up uh, further on the left flank up towards uh, his main assault area. When I went up that time it was, uh, I drew fire. Now he, he knows that I'm around the place. When I laid down I had a smoke, the adrenaline came down a little bit and uh, I said okay well uh, you know from a tactical point of view it was useless me going back up. Uh, so uh, I pulled out and I got these people back I was going to be about 14, 16 wounded uh, amongst the group, which left me the other group that uh, other people non-wounded, but they all all they wanted to do was get out. They, they couldn't care less about his wounded. You know, they, they'd left them there. Right? Uh, and I said, well, this is not on. People, we're, they're all coming out with us. Keith Payne, through his selfless actions, brought 40 of his men to safety. He's just one of those guys who exemplifies the training team motto, persevere. And the action that earned him the VC is simply that. It's a sustained series of actions over hours where Keith Payne, with just dogged determination, went back several times to gather his men. They were my soldiers and uh, I had to get as many out as I could. And I knew that they were relying on me. Uh, so, uh, I wasn't going to let him down. We have to return to the highway and to Lake George to learn the stories of the two Australian Victoria Cross recipients who lost their lives in Vietnam. Major Peter Badco was a soldier's soldier. Born in Adelaide, he graduated from Portsea Officer Cadet School in 1952, saw service in Malaya and fulfilled his ambition to serve in Vietnam when he was posted there in August 1966. Peter Badko was with a South Vietnamese company when it came under heavy small arms fire. He moved amongst his soldiers and by encouragement and example got them moving forward again. He lived for his regional force soldiers, his South Vietnamese soldiers, and led them, despite their reluctance to engage in battle, as was so often the case, led them outstandingly, from the front, continually. It was reported that when Badco rose to throw a grenade, his radio operator pulled him down because of the heavy small arms fire. It was when he rose a second time, his final act of valour, that he was hit and instantly killed. Peter Badco left behind a wife and three young daughters. He's buried in the Terendak Cemetery in Malaysia, where his epitaph reads, he lived and died a soldier. A little further along Lake George is the area named for the other Australian VC recipient killed in Vietnam, Kevin Wheatley. If you wanted to find anything to sum up Wheatley, it's his exuberance, his, uh, his dashing characteristics on the football field and in action. It's, it's how the man's made. He's a, he's a charismatic character, larger than life. Wheatley was 19 years old when he joined the army and his reputation quickly earned him the nickname Dasher. When he drove through villages, children would run from their houses shouting, Ned Kelly. 
He was married, had four children, and was 28 years of age on the 13th of November, 1965. Now, what happened on that day is, of course, recorded in the official citation published in the London Gazette, the wording of which the Queen personally intervened in. And that's unusual. Although told by the medical assistant that Warrant Officer Swanton was dying, Warrant Officer Wheatley refused to abandon him. He discarded his radio to enable him to half drag, half carry Warrant Officer Swanton. Now this is where the Queen intervened. The official wording had stated that he had abandoned his rifle and radio to enable him to half drag, half carry Warrant Officer Swanton. And Her Majesty was well aware that a soldier was not permitted to abandon his weapon. The amended citation continues. Half carry Warrant Officer Swanton under heavy machine gun and automatic rifle fire into the comparative safety of a wooded area some 200 metres away. He was assisted by a private Din Do, who, when the Viet Cong were only some 10 metres away, urged him to leave his dying comrade. Again he refused and was seen to pull the pins from two grenades and calmly awaited the enemy, holding one grenade in each hand. The two bodies were found at first light next morning. Both had died of gunshot wounds. That both had died of gunshot wounds was also added at Her Majesty's request so as to make it absolutely unambiguous that what we were dealing with here was an act of valour, not, as it had been termed, an act of self-immolation. Dasher Wheatley did not die for his country. He did not die for a cause. He died because you don't leave behind your mate. And Butch Swanton was his mate. A couple of years after the end of the Vietnam War, Australia left the Imperial Honours System. No more sirs, no more dames, no more members of the British Empire, and no more VCs. Instead, we have the Order of Australia, and for acts of valour, a medal that is identical in every way to the VC, except that it's known as the Victoria Cross for Australia. Forty years after Keith Payne's courage in bringing in the wounded under fire, Trooper Mark Donaldson was awarded the first VC for Australia in Afghanistan for rescuing a wounded comrade under fire. And that, of course, is what Australia's first VC had done more than a hundred years earlier. Sir Neville House was asked by a journalist about his deed. He said, my horse reared and I was thrown on my head. Suffering from concussion and not knowing what I was doing, I performed this tremendous act of valour while suffering from temporary insanity. Now, his tongue was probably firmly planted in his cheek, but Sir Neville House, as he was to become, went on to supervise army medical services in the thick of the fighting in Gallipoli and on the Western Front. Perhaps what he was suggesting, and he was pretty well qualified to do it, is that there is no explanation, scientific, logical or otherwise, for acts of bravery. Maybe it was mateship, maybe a sense of humanity, maybe just duty, who knows. All we're left with is a group of men from many varied walks of life who perhaps share only one thing in common. For some inexplicable reason, they all performed extraordinary acts of valour.